Aloha, Ohana and friends. Good to see you again. It's time for Tales with Tutu. And today I have a new story that's told in the form of a rhyme. So it's kind of like a, a song in a book with a story with a great moral. It's called One Small Blue Bead by Bird Baylor. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy reading to you. One small blue bead, a turquoise bead, no larger than an apple seed. You might not notice a thing so small, you might walk by and not see it at all. Though it shines as blue as the piece of the sky, as bright as the flash of an eagle's eye. When men still lived in cliffs and caves and great beasts roamed the land, there was a boy who held this bead clutched tightly in his hand. But now the bead lies forgotten in the quiet, warm desert sand. How long has it been there? Who can say? Maybe 10,000 years in one long day. For this is a wide and lonely land where hardly a footstep disturbs the sand. And very few people happen to pass a certain clump of tall, dried grass that hides this bit of blue. But someone will find it. Will that someone be you? Well, here's a map to follow. It's drawn to show where men went wandering ages ago. And if it leads you to the bead there in the sand, before you stoop beside it or take it in your hand, look off in the desert sky and watch the eagles floating by. Listen to the wind and try to let time blow away, away, back to a dim and ancient day. Back to a boy all brown in the sun. Can't you see him leap? Can't you almost see him run? He's fast as a rabbit, wary as a deer. He moves like a shadow when danger comes near. Yes, this is the boy who once stood here, where the turquoise bead now lies. He had no name, just call him boy, but he had dreams in his eyes. Go back with him, back to a night, when the cold rain was falling, and the wind there came whining of a wolf cub calling and calling and a band of men sat huddled in a cave where coals of fire glowed warm and red boy laid on a curled in a bed of leaves but he sat up when the old man said this thought keeps spinning in my head there must be caves just like our own somewhere and other axes made of stone somewhere there must be other men like me but the others only laughed. What foolish talk, old man. We've been the only people since time began. There are no people anywhere but here. Boy's mother blinked her eyes in fear. I'm afraid to think of strangers coming near. But Boy was filled with wonder of this new thought was a thunder in his mind. Can there be, far from this cave, a boy like me? A far pale star fell through the night and the old man watched the streak of light that flamed and died on the other side of the world. I want to go see, he said. I want to know what's over there. I want to wander everywhere. I'll search for men in far off places. I'll touch their hands and I'll see their faces. But all the others of the tribe said, no, you cannot go. Each man here has work to do. Who would do your share for you? Not I, they said, not I. Besides, why? Why would anyone want to go? What is there to know? What that we don't already know? We found berries and seeds to make children grow. We found where cold, sweet waters flow. We've learned to make fire a glow. Here we have shelter from wind and rain. Here we look down on the grassy plain. How could life be better anywhere? Why go searching far away over there? But the fire burned low, and still they talked. And still the men said no, and still the old man told them how much he longed to go. Then a small voice spoke. I'll do your share. I'll work hard and long, and I'll keep, try to keep you lucky with my good luck song. Then they all turned to boy with looks of surprise, for he'd always been a lazy boy with lazy laughing eyes. If you sent him to hunt wildcats, he'd just play with butterflies. But the boy who stood there straight and tall, he didn't even look like the same boy at all. Boy stood alone. His words first came shy and slow. I think there's something 
that tells a man to go in search of people who may not be in search of places he may not see still he has to search that's clear to me old man i'll tend your fire while you're away i'll walk your path and hunt each day the others asked do you swear to do the work of two boy looked at the old man and nodded his head i do you can go where you like old man they said so he walked off alone taking his dreams in his head the people said wisely how foolish he seems but boy boy clambered up a hill to watch him out of sight and once he smiled and once he waved and then he sang with all his might he sang his good luck song to speed the old man's feet along like happy birds in flight now boy must do the work of two his day begins when the moon shines and he wakes to the sound of the coyote whines and boy seems to weep seems to be weak and very small where the storms are fierce and the rocks are tall but he loves the sound of the wind's wild call and he likes to crouch on a canyon wall near an eagle's mess nest and best of all he likes to dream the old man's dream of scattered people wide he would seem i wonder i wonder if on some far hillside there is a boy who sits alone and thinks the same thoughts as my own I wonder if he wonders if there's a boy with thoughts like his. I'd like to tell him that there is and that I'm that boy. Well, that was a good dream, his favorite dream too, but the people kept saying it just can't be true. You can search till the mountains disappear and the only men you'll find are right here. Oh, let them talk, let them talk. Boy doesn't care. He's too busy hunting his fox in his lair. He's too busy gathering berries and seeds and roots that man eats and the stones he needs for weapons and tools. He's too busy fishing in bright still pools. Now, any time you want boy, you have to look fast because he's leaping the bushes, flashing on past. But of all the work he did day after day, the hardest work was waiting for time to pass away. For no old man came walking up the hill, and people told Bill, Boy, We know he never will. He'll never come back. Full moons came and went. Bees followed clover scent. Rabbits found holes to spin winter in, and Boy wrapped warm in a gray wolf skin. And summer winds came back and filled the sky and lifted small birds as they learned to fly. But no man came through the mountain pass what sounded like his whistle was just wind in the grass. Now boy learned people saying, and he heard the tribe must wander on. He knew then that almost all hope was gone. We need to find a new hunting ground, some far valley where we'll hear the sound of mammoths trumpeting in the night, where the sky is full of birds and bison roam in herds and the fish in the lake flash bright. And all the tribes said, yes, we must move on, for our hunters bring home less and less. We must move on. Boy said, but how will the old man ever guess which way we went through all the wilderness? He will never know where we have gone. Oh, forget him, boy, we must move on. We'll be gone when the first light of dawn touches the sky. Now boy didn't argue, and boy didn't cry. But just one last time he thought he'd climb his favorite hill to see what clouds were drifting by and sit there quiet and still just one last time. But look, there by those faraway trees, something moves. Is it only shadow, boy sees? He shades his eyes and it moves again. Why, why you'd almost think it was two men. His heart beats fast, he squints at the sun. Men! He shouts, men, and he wants to run, to call, to wave, to bring them up the hill to the cave, to meet his family. But the others cry, danger! Their eyes show fear. There cannot be people anywhere except right here. Now they gather at the boulders. Each man has a spear, and they wait on the mountain while the cliffs are sheer. Will there others be there at their side? Shall we fight? Shall we stand, or shall we hide? And boy said, no, wait! Whoever they are, we must welcome them, our brothers, for they have walked far, just as we have walked before. Perhaps they too have wondered if there were men 
or more. The people stood watching as the figures grew. Boys saw their faces, and one of them he knew. Suddenly, the old man's whistle was heard, and to boy it sounded gayer than a singing bird. Could ever sound, he whirled around and ran in a flurry of dust and joy to a place where the old man stood with a boy. He was skinny and brown, just about boy size, of dreams, of dreams that he had in his eyes. They stared in silence a little while. Boy lowered his eyes, and then he tried to smile. The people gazed at this new boy, even touched his hands and, and shook their head as though it were too much to understand. Boy, did you ever wonder if there were other boys like you? Why, yes, I did. I used to wonder that. Well, I did too. And there they gathered in silence and listened to him tell of wonders like a roaring sea and the sound in one seashell and deserts where no drop of rain ever fell. He had seen drawings scratched on a rock, needles made of bone, red and yellow paint, points of knives and stone, and here and there restless roaming bands of men who walked the wild and lonely land. And around his neck the new boy wore something they had never seen before. It was tied with a reed, one small blue bead, a turquoise bead, no longer long, larger than an apple seed. He took it off and said, boy, this is for you. Did you ever see a blue so blue? Look how it holds the color of the sky. It's like a flower that will never die. Boy shook his head and held it tight and he looked at it in every light. Oh, thank you, I'll wear it day and night. And I'll never feel alone again for any good thing can happen when the world is full of tribes of men who know that they have brothers, and the bead reminds me of those others everywhere. It makes me dare wonderful things, and my heart sings my good luck song. And soon enough, his song was heard on many a misty hilltop by many a startled bird. For the tribe set out at the break of day, boy and the old man leading the way. They passed by nameless canyons and saw nameless rivers flow, they followed mountain ridges into valleys below, and the way was rocky and hard and slow, for that's the only way the tribe of men could go. In that distant time when boy went walking across the land, holding a blue bead tightly in his hand. Now this bead lies in a sandy place where winter weeds all look like lace, and a gopher sits with sun in his face and looking out over the desert land while eagles drop shadows on white hot sand. So if you, my friend, find it, please take care not to leave it just anywhere. For the boy named Boy would be happy to know that his blue bead goes with you wherever you go. The blue bead by Bird Baylor. <laughs> Poems, stories, songs are wonderful and have such meaning in all of them. But you know, if a poem or a story or a song is to stay alive, it doesn't just need a writer or a poet. It needs you and I to sing it to others, to share it with others. So as you go today, remember to share a song, a poem, or a story with a friend that you haven't met. Aloha, ahui ho.